Did you know that when you make time to do three simple things each day with your children, talking, reading, and singing, you're helping to shape and strengthen their brains for the years to come? I love to look at the pictures in a book and notice little details about the characters. I pause along the way to ask my child to wonder about how they might feel. When you ask open-ended questions like, what do you notice? Or what do you think will happen next? You're inviting them to be curious. All these rich conversations help develop both their vocabularies and their thinking skills. And it's a great way for you and your child to bond and discover the world together. As a father, helping my child is the most important thing to me. Each of us has the power to create a strong start for our children by talking, reading, and singing with them from the moment they're born and help them to enter school ready to learn and succeed in life. Visit TalkingIsTeaching.org for free tips, resources, and ideas on how to transform everyday moments into magical moments for learning. The Ken Pittman Show, 1420 WBSM, New Bedford. Don't worry, man. If you don't leave your mama, you have to tell it on you. No big thing, no worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. One more uh, hour to go here on the Ken Pittman Show. Uh, Pats are in Miami tomorrow. I don't expect them to do very well. No, I don't. I don't as long as as long as Drake May continues to improve, I am very hopeful this is the guy. Ken, since he uh, since he start since he started since they named him the starter, he has twelve hundred yards passing already. No, he's doing he's doing fine. I mean, he's making a few mistakes that you expect a rookie to make, right? Yeah. Even um, even the leaders on the rookie board, you know, uh, Jalen Daniels and Bo Nix. I mean, they they've thrown some interceptions early. They've gotten better. Um, right now, Jalen Daniels, I would say, has an edge on the rookie of the year. But he, uh, Nix is closing the gap. Yeah, he is. So um, now he, he got rookie of the week last week. He got rookie of it's his sixth. Award he's gotten rookie, oh. Bo Nix. He was rookie of the uh, month of October. So in the last, you know, eight weeks here, he's, uh, I'm sorry, seven or eight weeks, he's been playing exceptionally well. I didn't think they were going to pound Atlanta like they did, though. That was pretty impressive because Atlanta started out pretty decent. Who, who just beat, uh, who just beat Jacksonville like fifty-two to six the other day? Okay, then uh, Detroit. It was like 38 in the first half. What's the problem with Jacksonville? They're quitting on Peterson. Yeah, I think they are. I mean, you get Mac Jones starting. And Trevor Lawrence is... Can't stay on the field. What's what's happening to him? The, be- the best ability is availability. He can't stay on the field. Yeah, I think I think he's overrated, though, Ken. I, I saw a promise last he, year. He should have never He should have never been the number one pick overall. Oh, um, the way he played, though, the last two years in college... I don't blame but he, them. But he's overrated, though. Well, and, you know, so, you know, Bob Grant um, told me if you watch him close, he doesn't, he throws a lot of 50 50 balls, and his receivers were coming down with them in Clemson. But that's not necessarily mm. something you want to do in the, in the yeah, pros. Yeah, you don't want to I, do that always, in the pros. I always remembered that, and it's true. He does. He throws them up a lot, and uh, there's obviously much more talented defensive backs to stop that kind of thing. But I don't know. I, I, I really think it was a, a a pick that I understood, but we, yeah. But if if your if your if your team has quit on your coach, right, Ken? Mm-hmm. When did you get rid of the coach during the like like the Jets did? 
Well, Jacksonville, with Peterson, you have a guy who takes chances. You have a guy who won a Super Bowl, right, being, being the Patriots. Yeah. Um, so he had a little hubris. They gave him a little elbow room here, but I don't, I don't think he finishes the year. They're quitting on him. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't see. I don't see him surviving, and I don't see Mike McCarthy surviving Dallas. Ken. I, I, I can't believe he's still there, McCarthy. That team is. Well, and Jerry Jones says he's the best GM in the league. He just invested a billion dollars into two players, and it's a rebuild stage. It's crazy. He's even gone that route. Yeah. Right. He, yeah, he re-signed, he re-signed Prescott. He re-signed C.D. Lamb. Dak, Dak Prescott's biggest enemy is consistency because he'll put together a game where he looks all world, then he'll put four together where he looks like he has no clue. He just, he just can't figure him out. Um, I, I think C.D. Lamb is, is top seven receiver in the league. I, I, don't have, I don't have any reservations about that. He's a great receiver. I see him in I, – I have him in my top five, Ken. Yeah, okay, fine. But I'm just saying um, – that's two players you've thrown a billion dollars to, and you need so much more help. And, and with the salary cap restrictions, you're not going to be able to bring in that much. Ken, who's your in 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 today's game? Who's your who's your top who's your top receivers? Justin Jefferson, one. Chase, two. Um, uh, Rams. Who's the Rams guy there? Puma. Puma. Yep. Uh, you put me on the spot at Tyreek Hill. Hmm. Am I forgetting somebody? Of course I'm forgetting somebody. Who am I forgetting? I don't know who you're forgetting. What team's he on? I like Nico, um, um, Nico Collins, too, down in Houston. He's a lot better than he, I thought he was going to be. I think he should be back this week, right? Yeah, he came back last week. I like him. Um, but he's got a good quarterback now. Yeah, and, and and he had a and he had a security security blanket this year too. And uh, the LSU receiver that's on the Giants, I think, is going to be a superstar. Na- uh, neighbors, Malik Neighbors, him him and by the way, Brian Thomas Jr., who's with the Jaguars. I mean, he's, he's got a bunch of touchdowns. He's a he's a very effective player. Both of those guys. Um, t- t- but 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 I would say it's it's safe to say he's in the top seven. You say you say five, but. Um, Regardless, you don't you don't need to address that that position with him. I mean, you have to get other players around him, but that's a lot of money. Yeah, because I don't I don't know what Jerry Jones is doing. See, that's, <laughs> what, that's the, Jerry Jones. Those two words make me think Bill Belichick would never go to Dallas because that guy meddles and he hovers over you and he's controlling. I, I don't think Belichick would want that, especially at this point in his career. I, like, you got you got to look at you got to look look at what coaches are on. The hot seat, though, Ken. Well, the Giants. I could see. I could the, see Belichick going to the, the Giants. The owner, the owner of the Giants, said Dable's coming back next year. Really? Yep. Dable and the GM are coming back. Huh. Well, Belichick, I think at this point would want to be where he has a grateful owner who's going to stay the heck out of his way. I I see. I see if Belichick, if like if Belichick gets a gets an, another head coaching job, he he would want to. A uh, veteran quarterback in place. I don't think he wants a rookie. I don't think he wants a rookie. Ken, you think he'd go like grab somebody like um, like Aaron Rodgers? Like if you look at if you look at the teams that their coaches are on hot seats right now, you got Tennessee. Jets is interim coach. Yeah, Giants. Well, you see the Giants is coming back. That's you got the Jets. McCarthy. You got the Jets. You Jaguars, got Giants. Peterson. You got Jacksonville. You got Dallas. Is Mayo safe? I don't know. Uh, you you want Belichick back here? No, no. I I I don't think it would ever work again. You got Jack- I, it, it, the the craft backstabbing of Belichick it would be toxic. And you know what? I think you know. Let Bill walk off into right the sunset now, and play somewhere else. Right now, if you look at it, you got Jacksonville, Dallas. The Jets is on an interim. Bases, then you got. I don't. I don't think Dable's safe in the Giants. I don't care what your owner says. And then Cincinnati can. Cincinnati they, is they, not out of it. They're two and eight. Can what? No. He, th- that coach is on the hot seat. They're two and eight. I think they are. With that, what's his? Burrow's been playing great. He, they can't be two and eight. Come on. I saw. Someone said they were two and eight this year. Uh, I'd be surprised. I could be wrong. 
Uh, no, I guess you could be right. I, I just well, I know Burrows. I was I was impressed with them so far this year. Um, I'm look- not not week one, obviously. I'm looking right now, Ken. No, the Bengals are four and seven. They're not out of it, but they're you know they've underperformed. Hi, Carly, you're on the air. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, uh, Cincinnati is four and seven. Yeah. Uh, they were four and six last week, and they lost by one point. Uh, oh. I know. And they've they've had two losses by one point, by the way. Uh, and against a team that always is is one score from winning or losing as well, the the uh, Chargers. Yeah, well, the problem with Cincinnati this year has been their defense. Yep. Uh, they're scoring points. Burrow's having a pretty good year, actually. But uh, their defense is pretty bad, especially against the pass. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the guys are legit. You know, he. I I just think that he has to score too many points in order to win right now, you know? I was happy for the Browns because everybody said the Browns quit. They gave up. They're, they're fighting right now. I mean, they beat the Ravens now. They beat Pittsburgh. I mean, they, Well, they got Miles Garrett back, and he missed uh, right. a lot of games this year. He is a game changer. He's a beast, that yep. guy. <laughs> and I think, I think they're rallying behind Winston as well. Yeah. No, Winston is... <laughs> he's done pretty good, uh, actually, uh, I, I I thought from the beginning because I'm not a big fan of Deshaun uh, Watson. Yeah. I'm just not a. I just I don't I don't think the guy. I think he was overrated to begin with, and he might have had a couple of good years in Houston. He got off to a really good start, but then got injured, and then he had the sex scandal and all that stuff. Yeah, he hasn't been able to stay on the field. I mean, uh, Winston is a talent. I, I mean, he throws too many interceptions, but if if the, he, under the right quarterbacks coach, that guy could put together a skills. great season. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's got skills. I mean, he was a really good quarterback at Florida State. Isn't Absolutely. that where he played his college ball? Yep. I, I think they were like in the top five when he was there. You know, they just missed out on the playoffs. Uh, I mean, he squandered opportunities with the Saints. And, you know, uh, it's just, again, I think when quarterbacks come into the league, it's important who's around them to, to help them progress. Well, you know, what most uh, analysts and quarterbacks will tell you when they first come into the league, the thing that they have to adjust to is the speedy players on NFL defenses. Yep. They, they don't... Yeah, when they play against a good college team, maybe there's two or three guys who can put up uh, real good numbers at the combine, you know, uh, as far as speed goes. But when you start facing an NFL defense, you're talking about the cream of the crop, the best college players, and you're talking about guys that have good speed. Well, quarterbacks have to... Not only thread the needle, I mean, throw it in a small window of space, but also a small window of time. It's a very, very challenging thing to be an NFL quarterback. Yeah, because the defensive ends now, teams are going not so much for the big, heavy guys. They're going for guys who can get around that tackle. Yeah, and I I, I got to tell you, guys like Charles Haley really changed that position. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Speed he was kills. tall, he was thin. Yep. You know, he he didn't have any extra meat on him. I mean, but he was speedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You went from the Richard Dents like, to the to the Charles Haley. Some of the best uh, outside linebackers and defensive ends that I've seen in the pros have all been kind of tall and thin. Uh, I'm thinking of Stork. Remember the Stork with the Raiders? Uh, I forget. They used to call him the Stork because he was so tall. And he he had he didn't have a lot of meat on the bone. He was an outside linebacker, but he used to get to the quarterbacks a lot. They had another guy from um, my school, in Duke School, uh, Northeastern University, Sean Jones. Yes, the name sounds familiar. Yeah, he was a good good DN, defensive end for the for the Raiders. But but the speed is the big thing. What do you think uh, the Super Bowl looks like to you right now? I, I mean, the trendy thing right now is to say Detroit and Buffalo. Well, at the beginning of the year, uh, I always try to pick a couple of teams. And in the AFC, I, I've gone against Kansas City the last couple of years. But this year, I'm not picking against Mahomes anymore because he's burned me too many times. But uh, I, that's why I pick Kansas City. Something's wrong, uh, though. I mean, he's throwing a lot of interceptions. Well, I, yeah, it, but their defense is very good. It is. It, 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 it's what's winning the ball games for them because uh, their offense isn't what's winning the ball games. It's a pretty average offense, actually. I think talent-wise, the Ravens could put together a run if they if they do everything right. I mean, they they have played many imperfect games. They haven't put together 
a game like they can yet. And maybe they're not peaking at the right, or they might peak at the right time, but yeah. right, it, it seems pretty obvious that Buffalo and Kansas City should be expected. But I still haven't ruled out the Ravens. Yeah, I, I think Pittsburgh is a fraud. They haven't yeah. played, uh, they played kind of a weak schedule. And uh, I think that's good defense. Uh, co- I think the coach is making a big, big mistake by playing Russell Wilson in there. Yeah, I think the guy has hit a wall and he's done. And, uh, uh, he should be playing Justin Field at least to develop a young quarterback. To, but that's the that's the GM who brought those two quarterbacks in. I I thought bringing both of them in was a mistake. Yeah, well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't too. I, Fields, I think you know. I, 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 no, but you go with one or the other, not both. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you you have to do that. Uh, yeah, I was wondering why they did that because now they're carrying two kind of big contracts, aren't they, on the quarterback position? Yeah, I mean, uh, hurt uh, Wilson's, is, cap, Wilson's right? is pretty reasonable, actually. I don't think they really invested a lot. I'll tell you what, I, I'll, I'll admit this too. I mean, I, I didn't think Buffalo was going to be as good as they are. People were saying the Chargers are going to be for real. They could be. They yeah, could be. You know, That's a good team. I was team. Looking, uh, looking over the whole thing, and I'm thinking, of what are the most disappointing teams this year? And I'm thinking, uh, well, Jacksonville is one. Yep. Uh, Cleveland, to me, is another. But that's primarily because of the quarterback position and the injuries that they've had. I still think if they ever get a quarterback who can function in there, they've got the basics. There well, like you said, good. Miles Garrett's back. And also, they were missing Chubb for most of the beginning. So Yeah, yeah, he's back also. Another impact player. Yeah, and I, I think that could be a good team. But uh, when you talk about disappointing, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, I mean, that is really disappointing. They're almost getting to be the Jets of the NFC. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I know Dak is out, isn't he? He's out injured. Yeah, but they've been blown out at home now five times. I I think major changes. I got to hold you there. Okay. Great to hear from you. Yep. All right, we're back. And another team that is shocking me is you got to say, how are they doing it? But Minnesota is eight and two. Yeah, you, uh, the second second best record in the division, tied for second best. Yeah, but, in the in the conference, I mean. Yeah, because Detroit's nine and one, Minnesota's eight and two. Who are they tied with, Ken? Uh, Eagles, who lead the AFC, the NFC East. So, the NFC North's pretty tough. Chicago has had struggles. They got out of the gate pretty good with Caleb Williams, and he seems to be bending to the pressure of being the number one pick. That's my take on it. But uh, the Packers are seven and three. Vikings are eight and two, and the Lions are nine and one. I mean, that's a good division. The Bears fell behind. They're four and six. They they. Could have just as easily been six and four. That ridiculous Hail Mary they gave up to Jalen Daniels and the Commanders. That was a, I mean, and they, and they give him all the credit. Oh, what a, what a game. He threw up a ball that didn't even make the end zone. It bounced up in the air, and one guy had the presence of mind to sit back there and hope for that bounce. Yeah. And, I mean, and, that's not the quarterback's achievement there. I'm sorry. I, 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 they were very lucky to win that game. And the, 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 the defender for, uh, Chicago screwed that play up too, Ken. He was talking to the crowd and everything. Yeah, he was like, he was getting, he was going <laughs> he's, at it with the crowd. He's and, celebrating, my, and, he, and the play's going on, rubbing it, rubbing it in their faces, right? It, well, yeah, so there's a little karma there. <laughs> well, play sixty minutes. That's what Belichick always said. You got to play the full sixty. Look what look what happened to Denver, right? Denver had a game winning chip shot field goal against Kansas City, and it was blocked. Yes, you got to play the full sixty minutes. And that guy was mocking the crowd, rubbing it in. Oh, we're going to win. There's no way they're going to get this. And the crowd probably believed him. I mean, Hail Mary's called that because it takes a miracle. The, Ken, going back to the the Patriots, they could have won last week. They they could have beat Tennessee. May, may, they're at the would have could have when when you when you're a fan of the team and using words like would have could have should have, you're on a, you're, you're watching a losing team. Did you? Did you see the Did you see the end of the game last last week? When when the Rams punted and it went out of bounds. Yeah. When did you kick that over? 
Yeah, there was a penalty on that play. Uh, and why and, uh, why and, didn't they call it? And May, no, Mayo 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 accepted the penalty penalty from the end of the punt. Ken, they had the ball on. Oh, the, that's right. They had the ball on the ten yard line. Yep. Why didn't you push them back and punt I, it again? I I, I, who, I you'd have to ask him. Did, was, did, did anybody ask him? Who's giving Mayo? The, no, Mayo's calling the shots. The advice. No, don't. That's on him. Don't you don't have to give him the benefit there. He, that's on him. Hi, caller. Hello. Welcome. I was wondering if you could tell me um, how's Jess Machado doing because she was um, doing the afternoon show on Saturdays, and I haven't heard her in a while. I was wondering. She's if she not. She hasn't been with the station for a very long time. I couldn't even tell you. Oh, very long time. Yeah, it hasn't been more than a year. But... Yeah, hmm. I, I, don't, I have no idea. I imagine she's fine wherever she is. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I was just curious if she moved on to bigger and better. Thank you. Anyway. Um, You'd have to ask her. I think she's reachable. 508-996-0500. Um, yeah, it, it, that's... Mayo's calling the shots. You don't have to think it's coming from upstairs. I mean, he's not getting any phone calls on how to do whatever. I mean, he would, I just... I, I mean, I don't... Not, I'm still unsold. I don't know if he's good or bad yet. Terrible. It, you can't really judge him on this team. Yeah, you can't judge him... This, this is one of the worst this, this year. This is one of the worst rosters in the NFL, if not the worst roster, position by position, talent wise. No, you, there's like seven or nine players that you you hope stick around for a long time. Yeah, if you look at it, you have your Bamor, your Bamor signed Gonzalez signed Duggan. You got you got Gonzalez, Duggar, Stevenson, Drake May. Then everybody else, it's like ooh. Well, I, I think um, Cole Strange. If he's healthy, Ken. Yeah. Andrews probably has no one, more than two two in them. I, probably I think, probably one or two more years. Yeah. So you're going to have to draft a center. You're going to have to draft a left tackle. You're going to need guards. You, you're going to need a pass rusher. You're going to need some linebacking. There's a lot to do here. We have we have, we have, have our right tackle, Ken. I originally... A new name. When the year started... Yeah. When the year started, I was thinking this team can't really compete or be, or be dependent on to really compete for, for playoffs, a top seed, before 2026. It might be 27, more realistically. He can, but, but if you look at it, they're in these games, though. Yeah, but they don't have the talent. You know, like, look, look at Detroit, right? Um, look at how good they are. Goff threw five interceptions mm. in, in Houston against a very good team, yeah, and they, they won, won that game. They can play that badly. That's the kind of team. And not, not that you want them throwing five interceptions, no, but, but to be able to overcome something like that, that's pretty pretty good. But if if you're trying to match this team up with New England, uh, with Detroit, Ken, Detroit has two good running backs. Two very good running backs. Montgomery and Gibbs. Two very good wide receivers. With Brown and... An excellent tight end. Good offensive line. The defense is getting better. Goff is a solid, proven quarterback now. He's got it figured out. Former number one pick in the draft, right? For the Rams. Yeah. I mean, that's a good team. So, I, the worst part about that team, I think, is the coach. He's radical enough, yeah, he's, he's radical enough to give it to, to, to steal a, a win. I mean, to steal. A, he, he is almost like the San Diego Chargers former coach who, who just blew games with his stupidity. He's, he's, yeah, but he takes chances, though, Ken. That's what I mean. And some of them are unnecessary. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. Marty Schottenheimer was, by the books, pragmatic, always sound, right? Good coach, winning record. He gets to the playoffs, he overthinks things. Do you remember San Diego at the time, the Chargers with LaDainian Tomlinson? They're hosting the Patriots. They're favored by, I think, 10 points in the game. It's fourth and 10 on their own 35 in the first quarter, and he goes for it. That's how arrogant he was. Patriots stopped them. Patriots scored right there, and they never looked back. I mean... That's the kind of stuff this guy from Detroit brings to the table. I, I, I'm a little afraid of him because he's got a, he has a, a Lamborghini, but he's got a shaky record as a driver. Mm-hmm. So that said, I still think they're good enough to beat anybody in the NFC right now. Philadelphia could put together. Now, we, we remember the collapse last year. They were 10-0 and 0 and then finished, what, 10-6? and 10-7. 10-7, and 10 and the 17 games. Missed the playoffs. Or, no, they eliminated the first round of the playoffs. Just a, a complete collapse with the best roster in the league, arguably. And this year, uh, he's still a lot of turnovers. 
this quarterback, still a lot of turnovers, way too many. Yeah, but he's playing well now. He's playing better. But they, another team, I mean, you got Saquon Barkley. You you got um, uh, Smith from from Alabama. You got... Uh, you got A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown. I mean, it's a good team. Yeah. So you can't rule them out. San Fran, we'll see, what's, we'll see what kind of a finish they can put up. I mean, they're not playing like we expected them to play. It's a good roster again, but they're, they haven't put it together. And Purdy's didn't even practice Friday. He may not play. He's out, Ken. He is out. He, uh, the backup starting tomorrow. Who's the backup? Brandon Brandon Allen. I don't even know who it is. I don't either. Okay. They're playing Green Bay tomorrow, so. Tough game. In Green Bay, right? Yes. Seven and three Green Bay. Quietly. You have seven and three and you're in third place. That's how good your division is. That's pretty good. Um, oh, whoops. But you, you still think the Pats go north or south of four wins? You think they're going to win more than one? They're at two, right? No, they're three and eight. Well, they beat Jets, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, and uh, Chicago. Yeah, i I see them going. I see them winning four. Ken, four. The overnight is four and a half in Vegas. I think four. I would have taken the under. Just like the um, Broncos, the overnight was seven. That's easy money. But they're they're at six right now. Yeah. Six and five. And again, this is a tough division, right? The Chiefs are nine and one, Chargers seven and three, and the Broncos six and five. Right there, six and five. And they'll have another shot at um Kansas City. And and Los Angeles. So and then the next ones in both of them are gonna be in uh Denver. So that should be an interesting finish up there. Thanks for calling you're in the air. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, I, I'm sorry. I know it's a big no-no to call back, but I just mm-hmm. want to say the one best thing about this show is, first of all, that caller that was on the air with you, that um, it, he just, wow, he knows so much sports. He does. He's like Ryan. He was backing it up, and he knew this and that. What a great thing, and I look forward to him calling every weekend. Yeah, he's good. Um, right, because like, he really brings it, and he has the knowledge like Ryan and Ryan I think bookies are waiting on him like he's got the golden <laughs> tone and everybody's waiting for him to say what's what because nine times out of ten you he, better hope none of these serious gamblers that. lose on you Ryan they'll come to the door <laughs> no, I'll send them to your house first guys <laughs> no just put a fake address Heckle and Jekyll lives over there no <laughs> But I just want to say I really appreciate this. And I grew up with five older brothers, and then there was me. And so sports was always a big thing. And unfortunately, I don't have one brother left. Um, and without cable, again, Tubi, I get to watch sports. But it's the NFL, it's not always the game I might want to watch. But I just want to say that Steelers game was unbelievable. And all that snow, I wish that was a Thanksgiving Day kind of game. And, I w- you know, I wished for that. Um, to be on Thanksgiving, but I just want to say that I had no idea Detroit Lions were doing so well. And I just want to say thank you, that's all. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Um, I never thought about that. Are you influencing the uh, the betting trend around here? I hope not. Could, could I be? Don't no. listen. They know not to listen to me. Yeah. If we listen to you, we, we, we're going to... Unless you want to make a donation to, to, a uh, tank. to FanDuel. Um, actually, I'm not doing bad. I'm ahead. I'm not doing bad either, so. What about the picks, though, the, the in the pool run? How are you doing with that? Nah, I'm I'm a, I'm ahead of you, I think. Who isn't? <laughs> I'm in another pool where you pick against the spread. I don't I'm e- doing great now. I don't even I don't even know where I stand. I'm in like twelfth of hundred and eighty nine people. Where how many how many how many guys are in odds? I don't know, sixty, seventy? Like I think it's between sixty and seventy, yeah, isn't it? That would be my guess. Um, I think I'm in the top 20, I think, right now. I, I could, could brag. I don't, could, don't brag. I could be wrong, though. It's not a good look, bragging like that. Yeah, I got to do something over here. So, what you didn't tell me yet. You're, right now, if you were to say who's in the Super Bowl. Hmm. You didn't even think about it. All this time, and he still I, hasn't. Can I have to go with... It's a toss-up between Buffalo and Kansas City for me. 
in the AFC. Yes. And then what, Philly and Detroit? Uh, probably Detroit and Minnesota right now. Minnesota could, I mean, this is a good team. I don't know. I, I had them coming in last. I thought Chicago was making some strides. They brought in some good help for the uh, quarterback. For Caleb Williams. Defense was pretty good, but they can't put it together. They're losing to teams like the Patriots. Yeah, I know. And giving up Hail Marys to Washington. They could easily be 6-4. and four. And they just, you know, whatever. They got they got rid of their offensive coin, yeah? How's that? I thought they would fire their coach. How is first. Marvin Harrison Jr. doing? Is he having is he having the greatest rookie year ever? Or what? I mean, I haven't heard a lot out there in Arizona. For no, me. I haven't either. A little surprised by that. He was supposed to be Mr. All World, the best player in the draft. All that. Um, I think Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr., Xavier uh, Worthy. That some of these guys are putting up numbers pretty close. Even Lad McConkey. I mean, he's, he, Lad McConkey's outperforming the two, the two best draft. Picks by the Patriots at wide receiver this year. He's killing. He's doubling their numbers combined. Ha- you want to hear Harrison's stats, Ken? Yeah. 30, 33 receptions. Okay. For 499 yards and six touchdowns. So he's on like a 70 catches, 800 pace. That's, that's pretty good for a rookie. It's not all world. Like, it's not Jamar Chase's kind of first year. Um. But but again, Cardinals are playing. They're playing pretty good. Yeah, they're. Uh, hold on. No, they're not bad at all. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. Well, Ryan checks that out. Um, I told you they were going to be good before the year started. They're, they're in first. They're six and four in the, yeah. the West. Yep. I mean, I, I do expect San Fran to retake that. I think they'll get their players back and put it put it together. But yeah, it it should be interesting. Um, we have a call here at 508 We want to hear from you, too. Thanks for calling. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Um, hey, going back, so I only heard the first part of it, and then I took a break. So if you already covered this, just let me know. But you were talking about Samoset. Yeah. Um, with the Pilgrims. Actually, you're thinking of Squanto, better known as Tisquantum, which, which was his real name. He was the one that... There were two people that came in that spoke English. The first one was Samoset. Yeah. Samoset was a sachem from Maine. And so he's very well known for being the first one that Massasoit used to translate. And Did they, did they cover that large walked, of a territory? Wow. Yeah. So and he literally walked in to where the pilgrims had started to make their area. And just everybody was just baffled and scared because they had been through so much already. So I conf- and, I conflated the two interpreters. Yeah. So I he said, it. welcome English. But what happened after that is Squanto, to Squantum, he was the one that had been captured. And he came back and he spoke the English. And you're right. The entire village was wiped out by a plague. And that plague, when it happened, wiped out a huge population um, of Massasoit's people. And what happened to Squanta was he actually passed away in 1622. Um, he became very ill. But the interesting part is he tried to take Massasoit out. He tried to take his job. He wanted to be. He had gotten so friendly with William Bradford. Um, Massasoit wanted him killed. And so finally, William Bradford, you know, had a great relationship at that point. And did Edward Winslow with Massasoit. And they convinced him to let him live. But. What happened was after they visited a village down on the Cape, and when they did that afterwards, he became really ill real fast and died. And people suspect that Massasoit may have had him poisoned by his people down the Cape. Wow. Um, well, that's how Squanto, yeah. But he, he, it would be an amazing movie book. You know, it, there's actually already a book about Squanto, um, and there's a lot of other books. You know, The Mayflower is probably one of the better better books but it lays that whole thing out so all that happened in a small period of time where he was captured by what was his name hunt yes the, yep and and brought and that was going on and samoset had been in the same situation that's how he learned english as well um squanto was just really unique by the way he was shifted around i should but before um, i'm talking about it, i should have looked at i mean i'm going by memory and it was so many years ago i read the story but it is still a fascinating oh it's so story. confusing but it's a fascinating story yeah. um you know and they, they had a 55 year covenant you know it's 1620 they got here 
102 came over, 51 survived, and you know that first season, and you know that that was just a, what it took for them to survive during that time. When they said without Squanto, it wouldn't happen. Squanto taught them everything. Yeah, um, he wound up living there with them quite a bit. Um, and got to know them all, but he got a little little greedy, and he wasn't. He was no longer trusted. He got a little by political. He got a little political. Yeah, very political. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds familiar. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting that the I didn't realize the Wampanoags went went up to Maine, the influence of Massasoit, and of course Mass, Maine was part of the Massachusetts colony at one point, but I didn't realize they traveled that far. Yeah, they actually. It, it's the way we look at the Wampanoag tribe now is different than it was looked at back then. There was all sorts of different tribes. And they fell under Massasoit to some degree. Some of them didn't, but they had better relationships back then. Um, but it started to really go downhill, you know, when the English started coming. Well, who's the um, tribe that uh, that Massasoit was worried about and, and offered the the area of Plymouth to Bradford if they protected them with the muskets? Was they either so the Narragansett? Narragansett yeah. were a big problem. Yeah, Narragansetts were a big problem. For they them. knew they were sick. Um, yeah, and so and that was that plague wiped out a whole bunch of different places. Um, but what's interesting too is that the Mashpee tribe and the tribe that's on Martha's Vineyard, a lot of people are like, well, why weren't? Because when King Philip's War happened, mm -hmm. afterwards, all of the Indians that survived were taken away for slavery into the Caribbean. Um, yes, yeah. but a lot of people wonder why did the Mashpee and the um, they called it the gay head tribe back, you know, back when we were younger. Um, right. They survived because they became Christian, Christianized. It, so it, because they decided to follow Christianity, they actually participated in King Philip's war against other Indians. Not all of them, but some of them. They were scouts for them and everything else. And another unique thing is that Harvard University was created as a Christian school. Right. When Harvard University was created, up until the early 1800s, you could still pay your tuition with wampum. <laughs> really? Wampum beads, because they wanted the Indians to become Christians. And so that was left in place. Not that anybody was doing it, but they finally pulled it off the books then. Because um, wampum, you know, to the Indians, it was how they told their story. The belts that they would make for the sachems would have designs on it with the purple and white. Yep. But then it turned into not a currency, but a trading thing overseas. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Great stuff. Yeah. And if anyone ever has a chance, Jenny Museum in Plymouth, um, Leo, that does the, the walking tours, he is a wealth of knowledge with that whole yeah, thing. I think people were under the impression that prior to the white man's presence on this continent, that it was like utopia here and everybody just was peaceful. There was some vicious genocides oh. and it was oh, not yeah. like people yeah. have this impression no. all the violence only came with the white men no it was nasty right. the iroquois i mean if you didn't join them they were mafia yeah. they would wipe you yeah. out I mean, yeah they were i mean it was even around here there was wars and they considered wars a little different where their wars would go on for years and years and years but sometimes the war was just things as simple as if you came across another tribe member in a on a walking trail you'd kill them yeah they didn't count the men by chefs they were warriors yeah, yep, absolutely. Apache, they, uh, Apache means enemy to all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was vicious times. And, you know, it, what happened back then with, like, Swanto getting taken by the ship that came, yeah. you know, they would lure them out. And that went on for years and years and years prior to 1620. And so that's why when the pilgrims landed, the Indians, you know, when they landed down on the Cape, they came across the Indians and there was a little skirmish. Um, and then the reason for that was because they were scared they were going to try to take them. And then once they settled in Plymouth and they started building their area, for weeks they were seeing the Indians across the hill. And that was Massasoit's tribe. Observing and They were scoping them out. Yeah. And Massasoit explained that the difference with the pilgrims was they brought their children and wives. And so, so you can see that it wasn't a war party. Feel yeah. more comfortable. Sure. It wasn't just traitors that were, you know, going to steal them or attack them or anything. Interesting. Yeah, good stuff. Well, you know, you, you've very, you had a d degree in history or anything? No, no, not at all. Just um, I Enthusiast? actually have. I come, yeah, I come from uh, Mayflower people. So, 
All right, I was going to guess next uh, that maybe you slept in a Holiday Inn Express, but <laughs> is that right? Uh, so I think Mary Mead somehow is in my family's lineage. She was on the Mayflower. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. cousin, my, yeah, my cousin um, said that. Yeah, we've tracked all the way back through Ancestry dot com, um, and we've actually got several that are that are on John and Priscilla Alden um, were the whole. 11 or 12th great grandparents, and then Mary Chilton who was also. I know the name. In the line. Yeah, Mary Chilton was the girl. Her parents both died, and she was the girl that the rumor is that she was the first one to step on Plymouth Rock. Um, the difference is that Plymouth Rock wasn't, she didn't step on it by the ocean. It was up where they built their fort. And where they built their fort, that's where that rock was originally. Huh. And then the rock, they moved the rock, and they broke it twice. Well, I bet he's so, taking chips from it for, you know, souvenirs. Yeah, people have taken chips, and it fell out of the back of a wagon. And it, it basically went in half. Uh, you um, know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised, now that we're talking about this, that we don't see actual pieces of the Plymouth Rock auctioned off anywhere. Or I mean, I, I don't know if, if they're illegal to have, even if they've been gone for 200 years or 100 years or whatever, but you never see any pieces. I don't no, know how you, you prove don't. it. And I, I remember when we were growing up, because uh, you're in the same time frame, I remember that somebody tried, they stuck a piece of dynamite in it or something like that, <laughs> or an M80. Um, I remember the story. I remember being in school and hearing about it, and we went on a field trip. Not too long after that, we were all looking for it. <laughs> I think if I'm it's remembering really it right, I believe there is a hole like about the size that you'd put a stick of dynamite in. I, I, I think yeah, it's that's visible. Probably what it is. That's probably yeah. Probably is from that. Huh. <laughs> my so my wife my wife is really into this ancestry thing, and she's doing this for her family. And um, her her mother's roots roots are from like Sicily, and uh, oh, but wow. but her, her father, who she hasn't really started yet, and she already found out that she is somehow related to. King Henry, King Henry the Eighth's son Edward, um, his oh wife, Cab, his wife um, Jane Seymour, uh, had a brother who was my wife's thirteenth great grandfather or something like that. Wow! Yeah, wow! Yeah, the ancestry is it, it's incredible what you can find. It yeah, and so really she's become incredible. really well versed at because the Italian records are great, but they're handwritten. Oh, and, okay. And she has now become very well versed with. Stuff I don't know how she reads it, but she's now lo knows a lot of Italian just by doing all the research she's done. She really likes really? it. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's so a she's, way to learn language. <laughs> she's put together more family information than anybody in her family's history, and you know most wow. of the people who That's will appreciate right. that aren't even born yet. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep, you can keep it forever. <laughs> hey, I, yeah. I really appreciated your call. That was great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ken. Have a good day. You too. Hi, Carl. You're next. Hello. Yeah. Hey, it's. Billy Mac, how you guys doing? Been hi, a while. Hi, Bill. Good. How are you? Good. Hey, um, prediction for tomorrow against the Dolphins. What do you got? 27-17. That's pretty much the, ga the game I have. I think I said 26-9 or something like that. I bet that's right. Yeah. And um, Philadelphia, that's my team. I absolutely agree. Um, the rest of the offense, he's j Hurst is just not what he's been the last couple of years, but they're getting it done by the other weapons. Their defense is phenomenal. Their two rookie corners are doing amazing. Is it Dejean? Do they um, have Dejean? Is it Philly that has Dejean from Iowa? The rookie yeah. corner? Yeah. Exceptional and player. They, um, it's going to come down to them in Detroit in the uh, NFC Conference game. Looks that um, way. I mean, a couple of you could see an upset with either Green Bay, Minnesota, or San Fran, but it does look that way to me. Yeah, Sam, San Fran is a shadow of what they used to be. I haven't given and up on them though. I don't. I don't. They didn't really lose enough people to say they're done. I think. I think they just haven't put it together. In the AFC, it's it's going to come down to Kansas City and um, Buffalo again. Give me your dark horses in the AFC. Dark horse Baltimore, but their defense isn't anywhere near what it used to be either. No, you can pass on Baltimore. Yep. You can pass on. I think that the, the charges keep getting better. It, oh, for sure. And tomorrow night's game is, is going to be, uh, I mean, Monday night's game against the Chargers. I'm going with the Chargers. Over? Today. Over Baltimore, Monday night. Oh, that's a good game. Yeah. Harbaugh, you know, they that's said good. Harbaugh was going to make them a playoff team right away. I disagreed. But I got to say, they're, they're playing good ball. Yeah, they're, they're going to at least make it into the wild card or the first round, for sure. And um, our Haven Blue Devils are leaving the 
this afternoon at about 1.30, heading out to their la- next playoff game, and they win this one. They end up in the Super Bowl again like last year. Go Big Blue. Well, it's going to be raining, right? So it's going to be a running game, and I think that favors Fairhaven. Oh, absolutely. With my keys, the kid's unbelievable. And Dartmouth, uh, they had a valiant season lost last week up. So um, they're out of it. Just barely lost to Mansfield. To Man- Mansfield's on their way to the Super Bowl now. Yeah. yeah. But good season. Um, all for sure. And you and yours and all you guys at the station, may your families be blessed and have a good Thanksgiving. Bill, same to you. Thank you. Happy all Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Yep. All right. Uh, last commercial break, and we'll wrap it up. Ryan Dixon's in the studio with me, and he's playing, uh, what are you playing, Parcheesi on your phone? Oh. Hey, 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 We're with Bridget, whose husband won't be home for months, and whose daughter is due any day. We're with Mike, who's leaving home to protect his family and yours. We're with all service members and their families who need community, connection, and maybe a bit of magic. Are you with them? Learn more at USO.org today. We're with Liam after his fourth military move, when being new is starting to get old. We're with Tara during the holidays, when she misses home the most. We're with all service members and their families who need connection, comfort, and a home away from home. Are you with them? Learn more at USO.org today. Well, that show kind of flew by. Ryan, uh, thanks for joining us today. Good to see you, bud. You're welcome, Happy Ken. Thanksgiving to you and your family and to all the listeners out there. The same. And if you're just coming back to the area, welcome back. I hope you get to see everybody that you miss and enjoy your families with um, with uh, the Thanksgiving feast. And with that, I'm going to say uh, good night for for now. We'll do it again next week. Ryan will be back with me, right? You, you coming back in? Yes. You're sure? Yes. Uh, you heard him, folks. All right, take care.
WBSM and W258DR, New Bedford, Town Square Media Station. We take one antidepressant after another, and they aren't working for you. It's like you're going in circles. Turn to a different choice. WBSM and W258DR, New Bedford, a Town Square media station.